these channels can be as deep as 20 to even 70 meters. At the beginning of the rainy season, these fish species spawn in or near the channels and the current carries their eggs, larvae or fry to the flood plains where they feed and thrive. Around November, having reached various stages of maturity, they follow the current back to the Mekong River. At times, for example on days close to the full moon, there can be as many as two million fish an hour making the journey from the lake back into the river. Most families involved in fishing live on the edge of the floodplains, while some live in houses on stilts or in floating villages. Some Cambodians are involved in medium-sized fisheries, using gear that requires a license, such as arrow-shaped traps, gill nets or seines. A few others work on a commercial scale. For at least a century, these large operations have been managed through the lot system, in which the authorities allocate private fishing territories or specific locations for a fee. First established as a fundraising tool for the king, the practice was maintained during the French administration and still is part of Cambodia's taxation system. Each year, it brings in over two million dollars in declared tax revenues and much more in informal payments. Fishing lots in the Tonlisap Lake and floodplains have kilometre-long fences that lead fish into the arrow-shaped enclosures. Barrage fences in the Tonlisap River Delta, a wetland area where the Tonlisap Lake and River meet, target both black and white fish species. Snakeheads are the most important catch. Dyes, which are a kind of stationary trawl that are set up on the Tonlisap River, catch each year thousands of tons of migratory fishes, especially real. More than half of that annual catch takes place in January. For Cambodia, the natural resources of the Mekong Tonlisap River system are vital, both to feed and provide work for its population. In a country whose income per capita barely reaches $300 per year, there is no other source of animal protein besides fish that most people can afford and easily obtain. Cambodians eat, on average, 47 kilos of fish per year, fresh or otherwise. Thousands of people 
farmers and their entire families undertake a yearly pilgrimage and come to the banks of the Tonle Sap when fishing is at its best before the full moon in January. They come to secure their yearly supplies of fish. Raw fish is cleaned and salted. Once ready, it's pressed into containers where it will slowly ferment. Turned into this fermented fish paste called praho, fish can be kept a long time without cold storage. No small feat, since few people have refrigeration. This has been an old Cambodian tradition, and many people, especially the poor, depend on having the opportunity to acquire cheap food with high nutritional value. Rice growers come to exchange their products for fish and bring their whole family to make their own prahok. The fish paste is also made for export. Throughout the year, Cambodians rich and poor will use it to flavor dishes from soup to eggs or vegetables. Some of them will have nothing else but prahok to eat with rice. In economic terms, fishing provides the livelihood of one Cambodian out of ten. That is, about 1.2 million people. They use more than 100 different types of fishing gear and methods that have been adapted to the various fishing conditions in different parts of the country. As a whole, migratory species make up more than 60% of the harvest in Cambodia. The country's annual crop is at the very least 400,000 tons, valued at approximately $200 million. This makes it the fourth largest inland fisheries in the world after China, India and Bangladesh. 